Hello, my name is Nigel Simmons and today I'm going to talk to you about the yellow-legged hornet or otherwise known as the Asian hornet uh, and the UK response currently. Now the current situation is going to be the main topic for this talk uh, as part of the BBK Asian Hornet Week uh, that will cover the current strategy, um, where we are with NESS up till 2022, where we are at the moment so far this year, uh, why we think we've had the increase we have, um, and then the major focus of this will be what an Asian Hornet team can do, how to monitor for Asian Hornets, um, how does this all of this work tie in with the MBU's response, uh, and, and throughout this I'll have examples of the response so far, um, some information on the background science, uh, uh, and then uh, a final slide talking about the timeline of the, any future decisions. Um, the strategy is one of uh, eradication, and that is absolutely key. We, we don't want the Asian hornet uh, in this country. We want to eradicate it and stop its spread from uh, Europe. Uh, and to that end, we're working together with stakeholders to prevent its establishment. It's a government led and funded response uh, funded by DEFRA uh, and uses a number of different agencies to provide parts of that that I'll go through here. But you've heard before, uh, but in a little bit of detail. Detail. So the lead gathering and triaging is done by UKCEH. Uh, the track and trace is done by the MBU, a Animal and Plant Health Agency. Um, the destruction done by our colleagues in the wildlife team, uh, also part of APHA. Uh, uh, and then hidden in the background is an awful lot of science that is done by Ferro Science Limited. Uh, and that's the confirmation of identification, uh, the analysis of the nests, the size of them, the numbers of combs. Uh, DNA analysis um, as well, uh, again in the background really, and that really helps us with relatedness. Um, so they do a number of samples from each stage within the nest, and also all uh, individuals that are collected around a nest are compared to that nest, so we can be certain that we haven't got nests missing in any area. Um, so, so far we've had no evidence of an established population um, up to the end of last year. No indication that detected nests had produced viable gynes. Um, we've never had any winter nests detected uh, and we've had no indications of missed nests from that genetic uh, analysis. So we've had no evidence of an established population. Um, we do lots of preparedness every year, looking forward uh, for, for, you know, if you like, can, we're continuously building capacity um, for UKCEH. Um, that's the lead managing and triaging. It's improving every year uh, and becoming more efficient. Um, there's a blog in the series of actions by the BBK this week uh, by Rebecca Clarkson on MBU triaging. Um, it's a well-practiced system uh, and we've scaled it up quite noticeably this this year uh, and that's working well. Um, also stakeholder awareness and um, that's uh, the topic of a lot of this talk uh, and that's really about Asian Hornet teams, uh, their increased use, uh, how they're becoming more involved uh, and what they can do to help and that, that is really key to this uh, uh, and a key part to our building our capacity. Um, we do training every year as well uh, and we do the training has two sort of aspects to it. One is the practical track and trace training and the other part is how to use the app that we use, uh, in-house app uh, for recording that information. Um, uh, the practical training, we tend to send people to Jersey for that. That was cancelled this year because of the ongoing response. Um, we also do training within each region on how to use the app. Uh, that got overtaken by events and um, what's ended up happening is both people are doing the training in situ uh, as part of the response and that's worked very, very well. Uh, response improvements, we do lots of work on this every year and that's a major part of my job. Uh, that is lessons identified, uh, gap analysis and audits. Um, we're increasingly using drugs Drones. We've got access to quite a number of them across the agency. Um, uh, they, have, they haven't detected nests as of yet, but they're available to us for those difficult situations should we need them. Um, we're also working in the background um, with the UK University uh, who is developing camera traps using AI and that's in development and that should aid us in future responses. Um, during this response as well, we're, we're using wider agency support. We have a planning 
call at the start of the outbreak that, uh, that ties us into that so we can pull any resources in that we need going forward. We use welfare units, vans on site to provide uh, facilities, if you like, to the inspectors. We also have forward operating bases if, if required to store equipment or have meetings in. Uh, and we use staff from other inspectors, inspectorates. We've had non-native species inspectors working with us uh, as we have had plant health inspectors. And we'll be using more of them. They're a large large inspectorate uh, and we'll be using more of them to bolster our numbers going forward. Up to 2022 we've had 13 nests in 11 locations. I've gone through this year on year uh, as, we, as we've been mounting responses with you um, uh, uh, and you, you should be aware of it. Uh, this year we've had 31 nests so far. They've very much shown us a southern distribution here across the coast uh, and we'll talk about why that may be in a moment. Uh, but also we've got this very clear um, uh, number of sightings if you like and, and these are ones that have come in aided by transportation routes uh, from Europe uh, in, in the back of vehicles the Queens will come in or um, in cars uh, uh, and it's up the M20 uh, and uh, railway lines uh, from from the ports at Dover. Um, why the increase? Well, the, the population in France is well established and certainly is increasing in density into the north. The average density of nests is one per km squared across the whole of France. Um, it was very much over the last year, a wasp hornet year, if you like. Uh, we had a long warm summer last year, leading to lots of queens being produced um, and a good spring early summer this year, meaning that more of them were able to survive uh, and established nests uh, and that ties in the amount of um, primary nests that we've detected and I'll mention more on them later on. Uh, there's lots of routes into the UK as I've indicated Dover's only 20 miles uh, from France 32 kilometers. Uh, hornets can fly that or they can uh, use human mediated transport and hitchhike in and on vehicles, uh, boats, ferries, cars uh, etc. Asian Hornet teams are, are very key to, to, to our response uh, and your work helping us is very much appreciated. Um, the, the key areas, and I'll go into more details on the next slide, is raising awareness, helping public beekeepers with identification and during a response. Um, you can see the map of the Asian Hornet teams um, on uh, the BBK website uh, and they show you who your local uh, members are as well as county county leaders on that as well. So the role of AHATS um, and the details, there's a whole page of this on BeeBase uh, at this link um, uh, and their key fun functions are raising awareness with public and beekeepers that can include giving talks to um, beekeeping associations, giving talks to uh, uh, gardening clubs, uh, anything like that in your, your locality, um, uh, as well as putting up posters in post offices. Uh, if you're close to a ferry terminal seeing, they'll put up a poster for you as well. Uh, and we'll talk about the literature that you can get from us later on. Um, another part, key part is monitoring. Um, uh, the, the method we wish you to use for monitoring is, is a wick bait station and that avoids bycatch and damaging any other insect populations. Um, uh, and this is especially crucial to be doing in are any areas that have current incursions. And by areas, I mean counties. Uh, we want really wide surveillance for Asian Hornet. Uh, and we'll talk about how you can do that. And it's not just about monitoring uh, bait station, uh, you know, monitoring wick traps uh, and the like. It's also about looking at fruit, uh, ivy, uh, other places where Asian Hornets occur. Um, AHATs also keenly get involved in following up leads. Um, the MBU, as will be covered in uh, Rebecca Clarkson's uh, blog, uh, send many through to the BBK office uh, and we ask the AHATs to follow them up. Uh, usually these involve where there's not quite a, a, a 
confirmed photograph but there's enough evidence for us to think oh we need to send someone there and we asked the local uh, Asian Hornet teams as there's far more members of, of you if you like than there are members of the MBU uh, just to follow up that lead to ring the person up to arrange to go around there and see it. the majority of these will turn up to be European Hornet maybe not going forward but it is worth uh, certainly the follow-up and the work you do on that is very keen very key to our response um, if you're involved in following one of these sightings up and it turns out to be Asian Hornet then you'll carry on being involved in the response we, we use many a hats uh, to monitor their beehives to um, uh, look at bait stations um, and even some during the track and trace phases depending on the locality uh, so you know if, if the response is on your land or in your apiary then you'll be involved if you wish to not everybody wishes to uh, uh, but what's more important actually is that all other a hats in a county or an area are also doing that wider monitoring as i'll describe uh, on the next few slides uh, and that carries on into the post continuous response after we eradicate a nest in an area uh, we stay on for five days monitoring traps to ensure that we've got all the hornets we can from that nest and there's no other nests in the vicinity but further monitoring in, in the wider county area is also key and we are reliant on the Asian hornet teams for doing that uh, and showing all this any any sightings you get of Asian hornet should be reported on the Asian hornet watch app as we've um, discussed before so what is available for AHATS from the MBU? Well, lots of information. There's news items and alerts. There's the RSSS feed. Um, um, we have a rolling news page on the front of BeeBase now that shows you where we are with the current responses. Uh, and also if you're, you're in a county with a response, you will receive an alert uh, as well. Um, there's other information on the Asian Hornet pages, including the ID guides and posters, uh, how to make uh, monitoring stations traps um, also PowerPoint videos and historic information on sightings and nests uh, and plenty of images that you can download and use as well the literature is all free uh, and, and there is three key uh, items that are available to you uh, they can be ordered through the MBU's email address or non-native species um, email address as well uh, they can be downloaded if you wish to download and print them yourself uh, from the uh, MBU website uh, and the non-native species website um, email addresses on them if you wish to order more so you can just download them have a look at that and then email more from there uh, the office uh, um, supply these in A3 or A4 uh, if you wish for them uh, in a glossy format or laminated depending what you're going to use for them and please order them uh, order as many as you wish uh, to increase awareness in your area uh, the first one is the um, Asian Hornet ID guide which on the front page has how to recognize an Asian Hornet then on the back page uh, how to uh, the species that are most most, most often misidentified uh, then we have the wanted poster as I term it uh, which could be used in a post office or in a port type scenario uh, which tells people how to recognize Asian Hornet the key features uh, and also um, how to report it uh, and then another smaller postcard and this is the the front page of it here uh, and the back of it uh, which again could be used um, uh, at uh, if you were at a uh, sh selling honey anywhere at a market for example um, or in uh, other locations at talks where you want to have a large amount of uh, small bits of uh, information to give to people all of these are freely available and please order them from the MBU office Asian Hornet spotting. Um, these are all photos uh, from the UK. Uh, at this time of year, the, the key place you will see Asian Hornets is on ivy or on fruit. Um, and that can be fruit actually still on the tree or on the fall. This is an apple that's been squished and the Asian Hornet is on it. Um, uh, these really these are these are the bait stations if you like these are natural bait stations for for the hornets and, and the hornets will come there to, to gather the sugary solutions from them or to gather protein for their young by collecting a wasp or a hoverfly or anything else that is attracted to these and taking that back to their young 
Um, so the key key things are ivy or other flowering plants on fallen fruit. Uh, also can see them occasionally on trees or wood. Also on carrion, if you see a dead rabbit or something like that on the ground, worth having a look because Asian hornets can often be seen feeding on the, taking this meat back. Uh, another area that's regularly seen in France is Asian hornets collecting shrimps or, or portions of shrimp or fish from marketplace stalls. Um, not that we have as many of these in the UK, but worth bearing that in mind. Also in front of beehives, uh, Asian hornets can be seen uh, collecting honeybees uh, and also um, beekeepers should be aware they can be attracted to the smell of honey and wax when processing honey um, uh, and can be attracted to that as well. So how do you monitor? Um, there's a fact sheet on bee base. Uh, you can use open bait stations for them and there's examples here um, but the best one is a wick bait station shown which is just this is a honey jar with a plastic lid with a small hole drilled through it uh, and then an absorbent material put up the bait we use is trap it sutira it used to be called sutira uh, but trap it or you can use apple juice sweetened with sugar um, and other baits are available uh, as well where do we find nests in a wide variety of places? Asian hornets really uh, are very adaptable. Um, uh, we've had um, them in brambles, in bird boxes, uh, underneath the barbecue, uh, in bushes uh, and in trees, uh, and also one this year in a thatched roof. Um, uh, if you've been watching the Asian hornet response in Jersey, you'll see all these situations are common situations in Jersey too. Uh, they are a very adaptable insect. Um, the chemical treatments we use for the Asian hornet uh, is Vulcan P5DP, uh, which is a permethrin based uh, chemical. Um, and and th this is available for pest controllers. It's just the same as used for wasp species. It's quick acting. Uh, uh, um, we tend to use uh, the wildlife team uh, fire it up a pole inside of a pole under C gas pressure under CO2 uh, and then we use a cherry pick as can be shown in this picture to usually remove the nest and the nest goes back to the lab from the important analysis. Um, any changes to our strategy going forward will be based on science and evidence. Uh, the, the DNA analysis is already ongoing but will carry on as we find more nests throughout the year. Um, uh, and the key point of that is the relatedness of the nest to each other um, uh, and that may give us any some indications to their origin. Um, this research will be complete by Christmas time this year uh, and then discussions will be held by DEFRA uh, with stakeholders into the new year. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that's been informative uh, uh, and thank you to all AHATs for all their work has done and very importantly to all the bee inspectors too for all their work. Thank you.